I have just been to see Her Majesty the Queen, who has invited me to form a government, and I have accepted. I pay tribute to the fortitude and Good patience. Afternoon. I have just accepted Her Majesty the Queen's kind invitation to form a new government. Let me pay tribute to my predecessor. Boris Johnson delivered Brexit, the COVID vaccine, and stood up to Russian aggression. History will see him as a hugely consequential Prime Minister. Good morning. I have just been to Buckingham Palace and accepted His Majesty the King's invitation to form a government in his name. Hi everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we will be taking a look back at the three different Prime Ministers we had last year. Yes, three Prime Ministers in a single year. I was originally thinking of creating this video in an order of worst to bad, but wouldn't really do the current Prime Minister justice, so I will leave it open for discussion. We will start with the liar, then move on to the next that not only nearly blew up the economy, but was also outlasted by a lettuce, and finally to the finance bro with no working class friends. So let's get started. Sincerity that the rules and guidance have been followed uh, at all times. It was what I believed to be true. It was certainly the case when I was present at gatherings to wish staff farewell, and the House will note that my attendance at these moments, brief as it was, has not been found to be outside the rules. But clearly this was not the case for some of those gatherings after I have left, and at other gatherings when I was not even in the building. So I would like to correct, I would like to correct the record uh, to take this opportunity, not in any sense to absolve myself of responsibility, which I take and have always taken. Is lying and his version of events is not true. What I'm, what I'm, I just repeat, I, I, I deeply sorry for mistakes know, that were but made. Are you but saying that he's lying and his version of events, it's very important. Viewers will want to know, the public will want to know, and keys will want to of know. Of course, of course. He's on the record saying under oath, you are lying, that you were warned about this event and you went ahead anyway, that you knew. That I can tell was, you categorically, categorically. Who's lying here, Boris Johnson or Dominic Cumming? Who do you believe? Let me know in the comments section below. So finally, did you lie to the Queen when you advised her to prorogue to suspend Parliament? Absolutely not. And, uh, that, and indeed, the, as, as I say, the, the High Court in, in England plainly agrees with us, but the Supreme Court will have to decide. We need a Queen's speech. We need to get on and do all that. This court has already concluded that the Prime Minister's advice to Her Majesty was unlawful, void and of no effect. This means that the order in Council to which it led was also unlawful, void and of no effect and should be quashed. This means that when the Royal Commissioners walked into the House of Lords, it was as if they had walked in with a blank sheet of paper. The prorogation was also void and of no effect. So does this mean Boris Johnson, the then Prime Minister, lied to the Queen? If you're enjoying this video so far, click on the like and subscribe button. Most of my viewers aren't currently subscribed. Your subscriptions, views and comments really help in supporting this channel by encouraging us to make more of this content. Now, back to our regular programme. With safer streets, uh, with great local schools, uh, with fantastic uh, broadband, uh, Uh, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. We, yesterday I went, uh, as as we all must, uh, 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 to to Peppa Pig World. I don't know if you've been to Peppa Pig World. Who's been to? Hands up, anybody who's been to Peppa Pig World? <laughs> Not enough. I was, well, it's, it's I was a bit hazy what I would find at Peppa Pig World, uh, but I loved it. And Peppa Pig World is, is very much my kind of place. Uh, it, 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 it has uh, a uh, very safe streets.
and the government of the country will be carried on. Being Prime Minister is an education in itself. I've travelled to every part of the United Kingdom and in addition to the beauty of our natural world, I found so many people possessed of such boundless British originality and so willing to tackle old problems in new ways that I know that even if things can sometimes seem dark now, our future together is golden. That was Boris Johnson. Let's move on to Liz Truss, whose sole achievement was to blow up the economy and also the shortest, serving Prime Minister, and how much she was outlasted by a letter. Good afternoon. I have just accepted Her Majesty the Queen's kind invitation to form a new government. Let me pay tribute to my predecessor. Boris Johnson delivered Brexit, the COVID vaccine, and stood up to Russian Tory aggression. Party. Yeah. I've got the list here. 45p tax cut, gone. Corporation tax cut, gone. 20p tax cut, gone. Two-year energy freeze, gone. Tax-free shopping, gone. Economic credibility, gone. And her supposed best friend, the former Chancellor, he's gone as well. They're all gone. So why is she still here? Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I am a fighter and not a quitter. I have acted... In the Gulf um, trade document that you just published, you say the government will continue to hold those who violate human rights to account. How are you doing that in the Gulf states at the moment? Well, these issues are raised regularly with the relevant ministers and leaders who we meet in the Gulf states. You and have what personally? what our aim, I have personally, yes. Well, your spokesman said that you haven't. So what was, what's the last human rights issue that you raised with a Gulf state leader? I'd, I'd have to come back to the committee on the precise timing of that. But well, I anything. Just tell us it. anything that you said on well, human rights. Well, I certainly rights have within... raised it when I was in... Go on. Uh, tell us I'm one I'm just now. trying to remember my most recent visit, but I can assure you I have raised it, and I will write to you with the details. You can't remember a single human rights issue that you've raised with a Gulf state leader? Oh, well, I've raised particular issues when I've been in the Gulf about well, name human one. rights issues. Well, I'm not going to go into all the details of private conversations, which I will come back to you on in due course. I'll name one. About the Prime Minister's time in office. <laughs> Apparently it's going to be out by Christmas. Is that the release date or the title? Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, I have been in office for just under two months. And I have delivered... But given everything that has happened, what credibility do you have to continue governing? What I've done today is made sure that we have economic stability in this country. Jeremy Hunt, as Chancellor, is somebody who shares my desire for a high-growth, low-tax economy. But we recognise, because of current market issues, we have to deliver the mission in a different way. And that's what we are absolutely committed to do, achieving that stability at what is a very difficult time globally. Uh, Robert Peston. Prime Minister, the uh, former Tory Chancellor Philip Hammond has just said that you have totally trashed the Tory party's election winning reputation for economic competence. Will you apologise to your party? Well, I am determined to deliver on what I set out when I campaigned to be party leader. We need to have a high growth economy, but we have to recognise that we are facing very difficult issues as a country. She's like a robot that was placed into Downing Street by some alien from outer space. Or maybe this is even better. She was placed into the Conservative Party by the Liberal Democrat to sabotage the Tories. Just saying. To deliver our fiscal plans and maintain our country's economic stability and national security. I will remain as Prime Minister until a successor has been chosen. Thank you. And there we go. Our shortest serving Prime Minister lasted only about 49 days outlasted by a lettuce. The new leader of the Conservative Party is Rishi Sunak. And tomorrow morning, he'll be installed as Britain's youngest Prime Minister in over two centuries. 
Mr Sunak is the first British Asian to become Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. His victory was confirmed earlier this afternoon when his last remaining challenger, Penny Mordaunt, dropped out of the race just a few minutes before the nominations closed. Good morning. I've just been to Buckingham Palace and accepted His Majesty the King's invitation to form a government in his name. It is only right to explain why I am standing here as your new Prime Minister. From all of you, I managed to start changing the funding formulas to make sure that areas like this are getting the funding that they deserve. Because we inherited a bunch of formulas from the Labour Party that shoved all the funding into deprived urban areas, then uh, they, you know, that needed to be undone. I started the work. I have friends who are aristocrats. I have friends who are upper class. I have friends who are, you know, working class. But I'm not working class. But I mix and match, and then I go to see kids from an inner city state school and tell them, you know, to apply to Oxford and talk to them about people like me, and then I shock them at the end of chatting to them for half an hour and tell them I was at Winchester and you know one of my best friends is. Well, we're not surprised. He's already said he takes away money from the deprived areas and gives it to the well-off. Oh, so not having any working-class friends isn't surprising. You can see his dad's face in that clip. He must have been thinking, what in hell are you saying, you stupid boy? But we're one of the few countries not to require our children to study some form of maths up to the age of 18. Right now, just half of all 16 to 19 year olds study any maths at all. Yet in a world where data is everywhere and statistics underpin every job, letting our children out into that world without those skills is letting our children down. So we need to go further. I am now making numeracy a central objective of our education system. Now that doesn't have to mean a compulsory a level in maths for everyone, but we will work with the sector to move towards all children studying some form of maths to 18. With everything happening, train strikes, nurses strikes, ambulance strikes, teachers and fire brigades about to strike, Prime Minister came up with a solution for all of these issues. Make every pupil study maths till they are 18. Literally, shove maths down their throat till they are blue and face irrespective of the career path they would like to follow. Do you want to study arts at uni? Yes, you will study math till you turn 18. English. Yes, maths till you're 18. Foreign language, maths till you're 18. History, anthropology, you name it. Anything that doesn't require strong math skills for your future career, maths solves it all. To make five promises to you today. First, we will halve inflation this year to ease the cost of living and give people financial security. Second, we will grow the economy, creating better paid jobs and opportunity right across the country. Third, we will make sure our national debt is falling so that we can secure the future of public services. Fourth, NHS waiting lists will fall and people will get the care they need more quickly. Fifth, we will pass new laws to stop small boats, making sure that if you come to this country illegally, you are detained and swiftly removed. So, five promises. We will halve inflation, grow the economy, reduce debt, cut waiting lists and stop the boats. Those are the people's priorities. They are your government's priorities, and we will either have achieved them or not. No tricks, no ambiguity. We're either delivering for you or we're not. So, what do you think? I mean, the signs are all there for the Tories, yet they elect people that others can see are flawed a mile away. Boris is a known liar, lied as a journalist, and was sacked as a junior Tory minister, and was also sacked. Yet the Tories decided to elect him as their leader. He lied during Covid, the party gate, Brexit vote. He simply couldn't be trusted. But no, the Tories decided to choose him as their party leader. And most importantly, the public voted for him despite all the red lights flashing over his head from over a mile away. In comes Liz Truss to the rescue, right? Oh well, we know how that went before they decided to usher in the third Prime Minister in less than two months. And what do you think about Rishi so far?
Do you think he'd do a far better job than either Boris or Liz Truss?